do dissidents. All right. By the way, how are you guys doing? You're, you're probably in the stratosphere now, right? Um, we're we're doing all right. Yeah. We're doing all right. Yeah. It's you know it's it's been a very interesting journey. Yes. This you is know? what you thought was gonna. Well, there's no way you could have anticipated this <laughs> this set of events. But. I I I gotta say, man, this is the most black pilled election I've ever <laughs> experienced. Yeah. And it puts us in a position where, you know, our, our brand really and our nature is to be honest with our audience. Right. We cannot tell them go this way, go that way. Right. Um, and I think a lot of us who are really coming out of the left, I think that's fair to say of you. Yeah. Are put in a very strange position. Sure. Now I watch most of your speech and it hits a lot of notes. I follow your work very closely mm -hmm. that you tend to hit. Mm -hmm. um, it's interesting because a lot of people in your lane, so to speak, although you kind of have your own at this point, mm -hmm. do not talk the language of patriotism. Oh. And well, I personally think that's a mistake. Yeah, well, I mean, that's fucked up on their part. If, I mean, look. I guess when I was younger, maybe I wasn't quite so patriotic, but that's kind of what my point was. You know, I had to, I had to leave America to see it, you know? I mean, there, we have obviously lots of bad qualities in America, but we have a couple of really good ones, and I think this particular thing is a thing to be proud of, right? And, and, and I, by the way, that's something I never understood about the political left, um, is why not go there, right? I mean, why, why not celebrate those things. I just never, never really understood it. I, I think it is, uh, it's not a great message to go to people of a country and tell them that you hate their country. Right. That's not good messaging. Right, because you're saying it's, it's absolutely valid to criticize your country's history, its policies, but that's, you're mistaking the original idea for the behavior of the individual governments, right? And, it, and this is a sort of my, I'm, probably, I'm gonna have trouble articulating this, but I think a lot of sort of modern left ideas are willing to forego the things that are really good and necessary about the American idea um, in order to try to achieve progress faster, right? And, right, and, right. And I think a lot of what the Bill of Rights is about is, is sort of this negative constraint on doing really bad things, and that's a mistake, right? And it's probably part, partially because I saw, you know, what happened in the Soviet, in the Soviet Union. I, I met people who lived through all that. That's part might be part of it. Okay. Now this event. There are a lot of people speaking that presumably you're not really ideologically aligned with in a lot of respects. Do you feel like it's a danger that a lot of us who kind of walked away from the Democratic Party and the liberal class in disgust, uh, particularly after the Bernie Sanders campaign, a lot of people got, so to speak, red-pilled by what it revealed about media bias and there had always been this kind of carrot dangling like no no really the democrats and the media handlers they have they want it to be nordic style socialism <laughs> it's just the republicans that keep stopping them right right and right. you could never unsee the fact that in the face of the possibility of getting that they never actually wanted that at all. No, they stomped it out. It's, uh, just like John Kerry said, they hammered it out of existence, right? Like, right. So that doesn't even exist in that party anymore. Right. But do you worry that in that repulsion, I think a lot of us went to, you know what? Alex Jones makes some sense. He makes some good points. You know what? Tucker Carlson makes some good points. Is it judo-like? Have we been pulled completely into another camp that is also ripe with contradictions and hypocrisies? Well, let me start first with, I think, people are conditioned, and this is part of how the whole censorship thing works. There's intense pressure to not be associated with the wrong people, right? right. There's uh, much more than ever before. There's this fear of association. 
um, in the way the even in the way the the algorithms work at Twitter, even if you engage with the wrong account, you end right. up deny listed or lumped with those people. So right. this is a thing that I think has become part of our culture. It's this fear of being associated with somebody else. Right. And I think you have to unlearn that. Um, I don't worry about being associated with anybody else because what I say is what I say. And yeah, I'll be judged on what right. I say and not by anything else. Um, the fact that I, you know, I'm at an event that has some people who have different views than me, so what? Uh, I think one of the things I was trying to say is don't be afraid of that, you know? Stand up for yourself, your views are your own, right? Like, and yes, now we get to the second part, right? The second part is, does the right have all kinds of contradictions and the things that make you nervous? Uh, are, are, are they ideologically, um, sometimes in a place that scares me, right? Right. For sure, but for me, the equation right now is that they just don't have anywhere near the institutional power that the Democratic Party has now, right? You've seen kind of this merger of the old Democrats and the Dick Cheney Republicans. And they have their hands on really the levers of everything. Probably, maybe because I saw it in the censorship stuff so graphically right. there's just there are no republicans in that world right they're just they're right. completely absent so if there are things to worry about on the right i'll worry about those later but i think this stuff is is really the urgent thing for me do you fear especially and we've talked about this uh in interviews mm -hmm. when we were coming up the joke was the censorious right-wing oh, uh, evangelical preacher. That was the Porky's joke, right? It was the butt of every, every counterculture comedy, yeah. all of that. Do you feel that ultimately, if they get power, they'll just go back to censoring from that direction? It's possible, and then, then, then it'll be our job to give them shit about it, right? I mean, the press's job is to crawl up the ass of whoever has the most power, and you know, if they end up doing that, you know, that'll be a shame. But then we'll have to worry about that then. However, I do think the political right has been a little bit chastened uh, by the experience in the last eight years. Maybe not a ton, but for the first time, I think they're seeing um, what that sounds like when they're on the business end of it. Right, And, right. you know, I know from talking to members of Congress, for instance, after the FISA thing with Trump, there were some people who were like, oh my God, I can't believe we voted for that law, right? Like, right. And so maybe they'll have seen the light a little bit and realize that the, you know, freedom of speech is an important part of uh, the American experience. And that's the only thing we can hope. Well, now a lot of people who are here will not speak about, I'm sure you saw it, NYU recently made it against their speech policies to say Zionist. They, really? Did they yes. really? Oh, you didn't see that? No, I didn't see they that. They recently made it against speech policies to say Zionist as a possible, not in all circumstances, they keep it vague, right. but if it can be construed as anti-Semitic, which of course essentially makes it impossible for students who don't want to risk expulsion to right. safely criticize Israel, because what do you call it, Grover? Right. I mean, what do you call it, yeah, a then, Zionist? Then, what they're after was what I was talking about in, in the speech. All these different speech codes, um, Stanford had an absolutely ridiculous one where right. everything from uh, seminal to bury the hatchet to circle the wagons, like all these things were, right, were right. banned. And most of that makes you laugh, right? All that anti-woke stuff. But the end goal of all of that is to make people second guess. Right, and, exactly. And they become uh, sort of conscious all the time of using the right words. And just like Orwell predicted, they shrink their vocabularies so that they stay in this zone of non-offense. Uh, and then as you shrink your words, you shrink your ideas, and eventually you just don't think at all. So that's, you know, this I think with Zionism, um, 
yeah, that's a classic sort of national security state uh, sort of red herring where they're trying to get you to not say something that's just the word that's descriptive. What, what other language do you want to use? Um, and you know, people should absolutely fight against that. But <laughs> I hadn't heard that, and that's that's horrible too. All right, so so final question, Matt, just to really uh, black pill everybody. Mm -hmm. um, it seems to me that we're moving in a direction where we could wind up having firewalls around our internet. You could go back to some form of pirate radio where people have servers in friendly countries to get around the codes within countries. Do you think that's where we're going as a nation? I think we're already there. I mean, most most journalists I know um, already don't use the telephone for working. You know, at minimum they use really? signal. Really. Uh, and if you have the wrong people in your um, in your list on your phone, you're almost certainly you know being picked up somewhere. Really. So I, I'm or, I've already noticed that people are conscious of not communicating in certain channels. But more than that, I think you can see it just in the way people act on social media. Just as you said, they, 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 we choose our words very, very carefully now in a way that you wouldn't. Sure. You know, 20, 25 years ago, just talking to your friends, you would never be thinking, oh my God, I can't say this, I can't say that. Now, everything is reported everywhere. Right, right, right. And, you know, one of the things they really want is they want to be able to... Uh, not have any media that isn't instantly transcribable so that it can be scanned and you know run through an algorithm and people are definitely conscious of that now i think so yeah we're gonna we're gonna end up in this place where people are they're gonna be meeting like in the free speech square in london right they're gonna be standing right. on soapboxes right. and doing Pe people's stuff. corner yeah uh, it's crazy all right all right J just one last follow-up sure, yeah. on that mm -hmm. Uh, do you think that Donald Trump, you know, I keep thinking of these comedies, God damn it, Donald Trump's the man we need. <laughs> do you think Donald Trump is the person to save us from that fate? No. Uh, I think he's, here's what I'll say. I know what the other group is about. Um, I also don't know who's really the president right now. Uh, right. They scare me. I just don't see that there's an alternative at this point to, to Trump. I mean, I didn't vote last time. Right. Uh, and this time, you know, it's a very difficult decision, but I've been, I've had the IRS visit my house. I've been threatened uh, with a jail sentence. I've had the FBI call me a conspiracy theorist and a Russian asset. Um, and I sat and thought about this and, you know, Tulsi Gabbard is a friend and she's put it on a terror watch list and followed and right, right. all these things and you know I, I I just think I can't I can't vote for these people after they do that kind of stuff for me. I have to vote against them. So, you know, I've got little kids who I've got to teach that you can't give in to bullies and I think they're bullies. So that, that's kind of where I am. That's not how I feel anything it doesn't express how I feel about Donald Trump, but it's it's much more about how I feel about the other side. Uh, that's what Kim Iverson told us the other day. She said, I don't like Trump, but I don't think the Democrats deserve to win after what they've done. Yeah, I, I would even put it more strongly than that. I would say I'm, I'm scared of what will happen. If, uh, and I, I wasn't even six months ago. So, but maybe I'm wrong and I hope I am. All right. Thank yeah. you so much. Man. All right. Thanks. Thank you, man. Yep. Take care. Please clap.